Today we have a less fun project, basically a new car, well, uh, new to me, and a sob story, and some new parts, and some figuring stuff out, probably some looking foolish. Um, so let me show you what's going on, and then stick around, because I'm going to need your help. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, um, and I could use another set of hands. So let's dig in. So this fine machine, uh, the, the black car, not the purple scooter, um, belongs to me. I bought it a, a few months ago now. It is a 2017 Volkswagen Jetta, um, and it is a fun little car. It's a four-cylinder turbo, manual transmission. I bought the car sight unseen off the interwebs. It was in uh, Maryland or something. And talked to the salesman, crossed my fingers, sent them some money, and uh, this thing showed up a couple days later. It wasn't the best process. I didn't really like, you know, not knowing the car, and I didn't like, like, they literally FedExed me paperwork, um, which I signed and sent back for $70, but... Anyway, it's been a good car. I was surprised that it had a sunroof because that didn't show up um, in the listing. And I was also surprised that it had a turbo. I didn't even know it had a turbo. So that was a, a happy accident. But um, so what happened and why it looks so terribly ugly in the front, I bought the car. I drove it for about a thousand miles and was coming home from getting some groceries with my son. And a drunk driver went through a red light and hit the car. Uh, we were just just beginning to accelerate into an intersection and he was going about 40 miles an hour. And he just came from the right side here and glanced right off of this giant structural component, which was enough to shatter all the plastic here in the front and destroy everything, but not really damage anything important. So. Got lucky there. Um, if it would have been another, you know, if this car would have been any faster, um, we would have been five feet farther forward and the dude would have T-boned me right in the driver's store. And I might not be talking to you today, so. But that turned into a giant fiasco. Turns out that guy, um, no driver's license, no insurance, not even his car, previous DWIs, you know, so really, um, not the most upstanding of citizens but so he he did this damage to my car and then he kept driving and he ended up going the wrong way down um, a highway 70 miles an hour into oncoming traffic and the police eventually apprehended him and uh, took him into custody and it sounds like he's going to jail for a while so good and bad but you know not any so much good stuff for me so, um, fought with insurance for a little while. Tried to get their insurance company to pay for it. That didn't work. Tried to file a claim through my insurance company and uh, it was quite unpleasant. Basically, I have a, a substantial deductible and I was gonna have to pay that several thousand dollars um, to get a check from them for several thousand dollars. And it just kind of didn't work out, didn't make sense. Um, so basically what I did is uh, I found the paint code of the car and I found um, some pictures online. So I knew what was missing. And then I ordered a bunch of stuff off the interwebs. And so what I want to do today is everything's finally here. So I'd like to show you what I've ordered, show you the state of the car, and then figure this out together. As of now, um, I have no idea how this goes back together. I know there will be missing fasteners. There will be stuff that's broken that I didn't recognize, probably wrong parts, because that always happens. Um, and inevitably, some kid will need a ride somewhere in the middle of this project, and I'll have to put everything on hold. So anyway, let's get started. We'll um, get everything opened up. And one cool thing I'm excited to show you 
uh, this blew my mind. So anyway, we'll, we'll start with that. It's, it's pretty exciting stuff. So here lies the pile of parts. Um, if you like Christmas, it's kind of like that. There's lots of wrapping paper and, and shiny objects um, that might draw your attention. So, so what we have in here, uh, I believe this is a giant foam thing that sticks to the structural member there. Um, no idea how that goes on. It's called like a shock absorber thing. This is your upper grill. Um, this is the emblem that I was tempted to make a necklace out of, um, but I have decided not to. I figured Flava Flav kind of kind of beat that horse, um, and I don't need to keep going. And uh, let's see, what else do we have here? So this is the, I believe, the lower grill, um, which wraps all the way around the car. And this sucker here is what blew my mind, okay? Think of that car, right? It's, uh, I don't know, eight feet wide, maybe? Something like that, roughly. And that's the bumper. So this box is not eight feet wide. So uh, it does not compute, right? Well, as I'm picking this thing up, FedEx guy drops it off and I'm thinking, oh no, here we go. I'm gonna have to send this back. Well, look at this letter, perfectly wrapped in here. They anticipated my every worry, right? It says right there, you may be wondering why or how your bumper fit into this package. There are a few things that you need to know. And it goes on to say, hey, if we were going to ship this thing straight to you, the shipment, the shipment would cost more than the bumper, right? A, a giant, straight, flat, fragile bumper. Um, there would be hundreds of dollars to ship. So we fold it. Yes, fold it. They swear I can open this up, put it out in the sun, and my plastic bumper after a couple of hours will unfold and be straight and flat and pretty and look great. So we will see. Um, I would not by any stretch of the imagination consider myself a bumper expert. Um, so I figured I would trust their reviews. I bought all of this stuff off of eBay and these guys had, I don't know, 10,000 like very positive reviews. So I figure they're not trying out a new process on me, right? It's gotta be working for other people too. So let's get all this opened up and uh, apparently out in the sun as if it's some sort of bumper crop. <laughs> and uh, we'll see if it straightens itself out. Well, color me impressed. Um, it doesn't look bad. I'm not sure what all this powder's about, unless maybe this is like a new way to traffic drugs and this is cocaine and you just, you buy a bumper off of eBay and it shows up and you lick the bumper clean and then, I don't know. If you guys know about how to do cocaine, please do comment. Um, this, this may be an accidental discovery of a trafficking ring, but anyway, it just, it wipes right off. So I'm not worried about that. It's definitely the right color. Um, I mean, it was kinked right here and you can't, it's been out here three minutes and you can't see it. So obviously it was kinked right here. That looks like it'll go back. Same thing over here. 
this is maybe a little wonky but we'll see so i'll let it sit out here it's like 85 degrees or something today um and hopefully that will straighten itself back out and i don't have to keep prying it open like moses parting the red sea here are the rest of the items we have the foam and interestingly enough this shock absorbing foam was more securely packed than my folded plastic bumper are they worried it's gonna get cracked or something i don't know emblem lower grill upper grill nothing. oh and obviously i have a plethora of other projects going on all of this business is supposed to be in there um so watch for that video naturally i got to you know two-thirds of the way through the project and decided to start another one because that's how you do these things so i have a three-car garage uh with one car in it right now and one dead motorcycle my kids can just park outside it's not that bad all right, so let's get into this thing and see the state of uh, the damage here. Obviously, this big structural thing is supposed to have some foam on the front. You can kind of see bits and pieces here. I'm guessing it's just glued in, so um, I might have to figure that out. Let me sure how that'll work. This is, uh, I don't know what you call this, like a valance or an air dam. And I did some... Uh, high grade structural repairs um, to make it drivable because this car has good AC and my sweet whip over there does not. So I've been driving this, um, you know, people dig it. But this is the stuff I'm worried about. So this, so this is the inner fender well. And you can see right here, there was a fastener and it got ripped out, fastener ripped out. So when I put this new bumper on, it's gonna lay right here and they're gonna expect me to put a fastener in here and there's gonna be no material there. So I'll have to come up with some sort of redneck engineering to put a fastener up here or you know, cover this with a plate or a washer. Um, I mean, the cool thing to do here would have been to just replace this. That's what a body shop would do, but who's got time for that? Oh, I got a little cocaine on my belly. Um, so at this point I should say, I'm not a body man, right? This is something that I'm doing because the way insurance works out, um, it's the best option for me. I know that this car is not gonna be done to the same level that a, a body shop would do it. For example, I'm sure the driver's side on that structural member is gonna be a couple millimeters higher than the passenger side. And I know that the headlight alignment is off when the passenger side is smacked. Um, I know that the lines between the fender and the hood don't line up right now. It's like a four millimeter gap at the top and a one millimeter gap at the bottom. So I'm gonna have to correct that stuff and I'm not gonna do a professional level job. That's straight up true. But what I am gonna do is a good enough job you know that'll do kind of job part of where the name um, comes from for the channel because the truth is um, working on your cars yourself doing body work like this yourself it's not rocket science and it doesn't need to cost eight million dollars these parts off of ebay painted and in, in, in good shape were like 600 bucks and a body shop quote was around five grand. So I'm gonna take 600 bucks and, and put it into this. Now it, it stinks because I got hit by a drunk driver, right? So not really my fault, um, but I sure am lucky that I don't have to pay my stupid high insurance deductible or whatever. So I'm trying to show you guys the difference between professional grade, take it to a body shop, laser straight, like a brand new car, you can't even tell it happened. And you know, the redneck engineering method at home when you got teenagers driving and bouncing off of things and you maybe you don't have 11 million dollars in the bank account so it's sort of a realistic approach so i think to start i've uh got the bumper cooking in the sun yeah i got all my parts opened up 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna begin the strenuous process of removing my temporary repairs. And um, we're gonna see about how stuff attaches. I'm gonna just look at this thing for five minutes, try to figure out where I need fasteners, what clips into what, what supports what, what is bent or potentially missing. Um, and then I'll start mocking up parts and we'll just see how it comes out. Okay, here's what we found so far. This thing here is part of a plasticky flappy thingy here, which slots into the plasticky flappy thingy hold there up here. Now all this kind of business, the job of all this stuff is to direct airflow. As you're tooling along and air's coming this way, it's, it's shoveling air into the uh, cooling area over there. So a lot of this stuff, you know, it's going to enhance uh, cooling performance. It's going to improve your AC performance. It's going to maybe cut down on wind noise in the car or something like that. But it's not like uber important to safety. Um, so I'll, I'll try to retain as much of this kind of business as I can, but it's not um, critical. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Now the other thing, I, um, so the bottom of the grill has tabs on it. And those tabs slot in to these little receptacles here. So that's just gonna clip in there. And then I took these screws out of the top. Those obviously just go right in the top there. So I, I think I know how the grill goes back on. It should be pretty straightforward. Um, but I'm not going to put that on yet because I saw that the foam business kind of goes in there and tucks up under a little bit. So I've been looking at the foam business and I'm thinking, what am I going to use? Like some sort of construction adhesive or something? I mean, you can see this is gooey business up here um, that that held the old one on. Right, see that? And so I held this thing up to this thing and I'm looking around and I'm thinking, well, how is this supposed to, this was, what is, okay, like that, sort of like that. And then I thought, well, what is this contraption? Oh, that's like double-sided tape or something, right? And, and look, there's a piece of double-sided tape right there. And then lo and behold, this is a Volkswagen part. So this thing was designed to go right back on this car and should be factory equivalent. Um, so what I'm going to do is position that roughly where it goes. The double-sided tape will kind of hold it, but there's no real fasteners to secure this thing. It's not like it's got a bunch of screws. It's literally just foam. Um, so we'll slide that in. And then my guess is once you put the grill in, that starts to hold it. And then once you put the bumper in and the lower grill in, then it really like secures it. But so this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Like that is clearly damaged, right? I mean, you can see it's smushed in. This hole is a little bit deformed. I'm not gonna fix that and everything will be fine. By Jove, I think it's working. I removed it from the cardboard and plopped it over here because the grass sort of wedges it into the widened shape. And if you touch it, it does feel warm. Um, so I think it's working. And then when I pick it up, it doesn't pop back to the folded shape anymore. It just stays in this shape. Um, there was a crease here that's gone. I mean, I don't see it. And same for here. This you can still tell is, is bent up. So I just rotated this so that this would get direct sunshine. And maybe I can just squeeze it back into shape. But the reason I'm over here is as I'm looking at the lower grill, this thing has oodles of tabs and slots all along 
the top, sides, and bottom. So I'm thinking there might be some sort of working together cooperation action happening. Like they, they go into the same slots on that little horizontal wizardry there. I'm not sure. I'll start holding it up, but I mean, this thing has a million tabs on it too. So I'm guessing that it kind of kind of clips into all these boogers and, and holds itself straight and flat. So maybe I should try to put that thing in this thing out here. It might be better. I'll take a look. Yeah, this looks like a winner. I flipped her over. Still cocaine everywhere. Um, all of these, all of these little buggers seem to correspond with approximate locations of taps. So I do believe this thing will clip into this thing, you know, part A into part B here. Um, and this will form the uh, structure because this is so floppy. This will form the structure and then this will make it look pretty. So I'm going to try to pop this in, all these little tabs, do a little He-Man move here and uh, I'll get back to you. So now the fun begins, something doesn't fit. I have the new bumper and the busted up bumper. Um, I did retrieve it from the road because, well, I thought it would be handy just for stuff like this. I need to uh, mock it up and see what I'm missing. And I'm trying to fit this piece in here with the chrome trim. I just couldn't figure it out. And I'm feeling pretty dumb, so I started looking around at the other parts. And at first glance, it looks the same. It's about the same width. You know, it's got the holes on the outside. One of them has three holes, one of them has four holes. This is the original one here. Um, so you can see three holes, four holes. Now this part looks to be the same as this part. So this is an addition. Um, the license plate holding portion is not present on this one. This big tab is not present on this one. This should be a chrome strip right here that would match that one. So it's really, really close. You can also see here I have a recess for a tab and here I have a recess for a tab. So that looks pretty legit. But then on this one, I have all these big bosses sticking out. And I don't have that on this one. Just have the tabs. So is this gonna work? Man, I really don't know. Um, I'm gonna have to see if I can sort of maybe cut some stuff off of the new one um, to get it to fit. It's darn close. It's just not like clicking into place like I expected it to. There's gotta be something I can do. I mean, if it was easy, everybody would do it, right? I don't know. That's one of the benefits of a body shop too, is like they get to deal with these headaches and maybe I ordered the wrong part. Maybe the vendor sent me the wrong part or maybe this is supposed to fit. I don't know. Gotta put my noodle into this one and figure it out. Well, I found out that um, this bugger here is cracked. And if you look at the other side, same crack and i found a little piece which i immediately chucked but a little piece of uh, plastic just laying in here kind of like you know this kind of plastic so i'm wondering if this wasn't sent out to somebody already um, and they you know ordered the wrong one or something and returned it because um, that's totally cracked now is that gonna be a problem probably not if i get the rest of it right but it just adds more confusion to the situation. What's it supposed to look like, you know? Oh man. Okay, no, boy no. Um, I put the uh, broken one next to the unbroken.
broken one. And you can see the sequence of the tabs, like that's pretty close, but the sequence of the tabs across the top does not line up. You know, here's a tab, but there's a recess. Here's a tab, there's nothing there. That's why it won't clip in. So if I take the broken one, <clears throat> You can see now that the tabs are all very close to a recess where they're supposed to clip in. So it's super not going to work. So I can take this thing and put it back in the box, send it back to the eBay dude, and uh, I can either be done while I wait for the new part or maybe I should just put the bumper on Sans little grill. Or maybe I can zip tie this beast into place once I have a good bumper. I do have more pieces. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll try that approach and see what happens. This was like, I don't know, 80 bucks or 100 bucks or something. So it'd be sweet if I could get away without it. Let's see. All right, I put the broken one in there. Looks pretty uh, un awesome. I mean, I could like get fancy and zip tie this stuff, but that's just pretty dumb. And I thought about um, maybe running it without it, but this part down here is supported by this. So I fear if I put this on without this, this would flop around and get uh, destroyed. I don't know, maybe I'll test fit. I'm going to remove this broken grill and uh, test fit it on the car with no grill in there and just see what it looks like. But the lesson is don't try this at home because you have to deal with this stuff. Oh wait, no, that's not the lesson. That's totally not the lesson. You're supposed to try this at home because it's not that hard. Even yahoos like me can do it. <sighs> I'm so muddled up. Hmm, looks good. This stupid cocaine covered bumper isn't going well. And I'm frustrated that I can't get it all done today. So I moved on to something else rather than deal with that problem. And I put the grill in, put the emblem on, that just clipped into place. Uh, and I wanted to illustrate one of the highlights, I guess, for, for this project. You can see the grill is in, all these screws are in, you know, it's fine. And on this side we have Nice consistent gap, I don't know, quarter inch, right here. And on this side, no gap. So this headlight is probably smacked that way. The fact that all the uh, screws line up tells me the grill is in pretty much the right place. And this headlight should match the other side. Now it's in. You know, it's, I didn't have to push it too hard, so it'll probably be okay. But this is one of those things that'll just never be perfect. Um, and the car will never be like a brand new car with fit and finish again. But is that okay? I mean, if I stand out here, can you really see that difference in gap? I don't think I can. All right, so this is the next thing I wanna fix. There's a little recess in the hood right above the emblem that is not on the same line as the emblem. The hood is just a little bit towards the right side or the driver's side of the car. So if you check out this gap here, fit my fat finger in there. And then up here, I, I guess this is like three millimeters. This is like I don't know, six millimeters, seven, eight. And you cruise on over here, holy smokes, nothing. It's almost touching, one or two, one or two. So this whole hood needs to go that way, like two or three millimeters. And I think that will make that line up better. So it's the kind of, kind of putzing like that that is what makes this doable 
again, it'll never be perfect, but when you fine tune a few of these details, it gets to the point where it's usable and you just saved a couple thousand dollars. So this is a perfect example of what I'm on about. This car um, was in a collision right around Christmas time and it was totaled by the insurance company. The skull smashed in here and I found a junkyard near me that specializes in European cars and they had a whole um, quarter panel assembly that I could get. So they cut the they cut it up here and down here under the door and back here and they gave me that whole thing like a quarter of a car and I disassembled this threw away all the broken stuff transferred the good stuff I welded a seam right here which you can't see from this angle, but I deliberately left a little nub right there so I could point to it and brag about it. Cause this is the first time I ever did body work. And it's not perfect. Like you see, there's a little uh, scratch right there and a little scratch right there. That's actually in the Bondo material. Um, and that's gonna be there forever, but you know, not bad for for somebody who had never done body work before, right? I, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I took this glass out and I cut this whole skin off. I replaced the structure. And the end result is <clears throat> that doesn't quite line up perfectly. You can see the left side is just a little bit too high, a little bit too high. And that doesn't look like factory perfect, you know, like this side. But it looks fine. That's where I had to cut the spot welds and then weld back in. Um, and then if you look really closely, I'm not sure if the camera is capable of picking this up, but this paint and this paint is not exactly the same color. It's very close, but it's not exactly the same color. Because I did not want to pay the body shop that sprayed this for me an extra seven or eight hundred bucks to blend this paint. I said, stop here and I'll deal with the fact that that's a slightly different color. So that's the difference between, you know, a six or eight thousand dollar repair. Well, actually, the car was totaled, so they weren't even going to repair it. And I think I spent probably fifteen hundred bucks in parts. Um, a lot of time, because I'm a rookie, uh, it took me a long time, but there's a seam down here too. You can see down here, obviously I wasn't as careful because it's under the door, but that's where I welded the seam. This whole thing came off. So this is like what a knucklehead can do, right? This is what a, a newbie can do um, for my teenager's car. Oh, and this is pretty dumb too. Look at the way the weather stripping is coming out. I could probably fix that if I putzed with it long enough. Yeah, not so bad. I mean, the car's got 200,000 miles on it. It's dented up, scratched up. So it all blends in. But this is what you can do in your own garage at home with just a standard issue welder that you can buy from Home Depot and a bunch of YouTube videos. So here's what I'm gonna try for the hood. Remember the driver's side gap is almost zero and the passenger side gap is too big. I just noticed this hole, that's weird. I wonder how long that's been there. Looks like a bullet hole. Anywho, um, so this is a hinge, right? This is attached down to the body and then up here to the hood. And you can really mess up the alignment here so you gotta be cautious and incremental, um, but I'm gonna loosen this hardware just a little bit, just enough so that I can move this. And, and my theory is that when the car got smacked in the front, it pushed the hood back 
towards the steering wheel and kind of a little bit towards the fender too. So I pushed it like this way. So what I'm gonna to try to do is loosen these up just a little bit, like a half a turn, probably just on one side first, obviously it's the same over there. And then I'm gonna carefully put like a screwdriver between the body and the fender here, cover it in a cloth so I don't scratch the paint. And I'm gonna to try to just wedge it in there to get a gap, a little bit of a gap. And what'll happen is that load will move the hood in relation to the bracket just a tiny bit. Might not work at all. And I might, you know, horrifically scratch the edge of my hood or my fender or something. But hey, I told you I'm no expert. We're all learning here. Cut off my back. I think that kind of worked. Um, the hardware is still just a little bit loose up here. And now I have somewhat of a gap. So I'm using a screwdriver like this covered with the cloth, shoved it in there and just kind of wrenched it over just a little bit. And with that hardware loose, it's kind of pulling it on, you know, sliding it on top of the hinge. So I like this now. Um, it's still not the same as over here. Like this still seems excessive and this still doesn't line up. Um, but my gap is better, so I guess we're going in the right direction. Now, so if I open the hood and tighten that hardware again, I think this gap will stay pretty much the same. But to get the whole hood to move over a skosh in the front, um, I probably want to slide it forward, like towards the front bumper. I don't know, let me give that a go, see what happens. Maybe that looks better so so when i did it's still loose hardware still loose i uh put a cloth up here and i took my convincer and i just tapped you know this way and i had the screwdriver in here with the cloth prying that way which should make the whole hood kind of skirt like that just a little bit and now this line is decent i'll take that I think this is okay. And this is definitely tighter too. You can see it's not cons totally consistent. I mean, like that's whatever, five millimeters and this is like three millimeters, but we're getting there. Baby steps, you know, try something else. If I don't like it, I'll try something else. I'm just looking at this thing thinking Life is so much simpler. All right, we're gonna run with it. That'll work, right? I open the hood, I tighten that hardware, open the corner. So this is it, this is the final uh, hood alignment. This is not perfect, but like the channel says, that'll do, right? Not bad at all. Well, I think that's gonna do it for today. Uh, I've got the grill and emblem on, figured out what the heck is going on with that bumper and got the hood realigned. So I think what I'm gonna do is um, return that uh, chrome one that's wrong. I'm trying to find a Volkswagen part number on that uh, plastic grill and see if I can find that part. I decided not to put the bumper on um, without that because I just have to take it off again and you know considering the redneck engineering going on here um, might I don't want to have to do it twice and now I got to put my temporary structural members back in there <clears throat> um, so that we're all good to go but yeah that's about it for today so I'm gonna wrap up see if I can get some of this dust off of my shirt and you know, that might make me, make me feel a little better, right? Use some of the nose candy for personal purposes. But yeah, so thanks for watching. Appreciate your uh, forgiveness with my ridiculous repairs here. But you know, tune in for the rest of the saga. <laughs> thanks.